Hey guys, welcome to another video for Anatomy and Physiology. As per request, I'm going to make another video on the middle ear. And in this video, I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into the details uh, of the middle ear. Uh, in the previous one, I did, I did go into the anatomy and a bit of the physiology. And um, I'm just going to kind of build on that from the previous video. So the middle ear, the borders of the middle ear from the lateral aspect is the tympanic membrane, which I have highlighted here. And then medially, the medial border is going to be the foot plate or the oval window of the cochlea here. Okay, so, so we're talking about this, all the stuff that's in this space right here. Now you'll notice that the tympanic cavity here, okay, this is a, an air-filled space. So there's nothing but air in here. And of course, you know, you have your bones and a few muscles here. But um, for the most part, this is a, a, an air-filled cavity that's connected to the nasopharynx through this uh, eustachian tube, this auditory tube, which is not to be confused with the auditory meatus, the acoustic meatus. Okay? So this, this eustachian tube, this is typically closed uh, in the human body. Now, it'll open up when you yawn or you chew. And I mentioned before in the uh, previous video that when you go scuba diving, or you're, you know, climbing a mountain, or you're driving up a mountain, or flying a plane when the plane's taking off and uh, gaining altitude, that uh, your ears can pop, or you can develop a lot of pressure in this area. And one of the best ways to relieve that pressure is to, you know, be chewing on something, or to yawn, or jiggle your jaw. And that'll open up the cestation to allowing air to escape and uh, equalizing the pressure, so you don't have that that pain. Okay, so let's let's talk about the um, well uh, the ossicles, the auditory ossicles. These are the three smallest bones in the body. Let's first talk about your malleus. Now, as you can see, your malleus has a lot of have a lot of components to it. Let's first address the part of the malleus that's in contact with the tympanic membrane. This is called the manubrium. Okay, so this is kind of a process in, on the medial side. And you'll notice that there's three processes. Here you have the anterior process of the malleus, and then the lateral process. And then you have the body, or the neck, sorry. The, the neck is, this is, this is the, the head. So the neck of the malleus, you'll notice, have a, few, have a few connections. And this one is the anterior ligament of the malleus. So as you can see here, that it's connected to the, the medial wall, okay, the medial wall of the, uh, of the cavity. Now, something funny here is that um, the tensor tympani is shown to be connected to the malleus, but um, I've actually seen that it's connected to the manubrium, so I, I don't know if that was a mistake or, or what, um, but yeah, I, I've seen that this tensor tympani muscle, which is uh, two, of, you have the two smallest muscles in the body here too, the tensor tympani and the stapedius. So we'll talk about these muscles in a minute though. So again, we have the manubrium, the neck, the anterior process, the uh, lateral process of the malleus, and then you have the head of the malleus, which as you can see here, articulates with, uh, with your incus, or with the body of the incus. So the, so the head of the malleus articulates at this point right here. This is called the facet of the malleus. Okay, this is the facet of the incus, so that, that basically just uh, addresses the fact that this is where they articulate, where they come together. So, yeah, let me see if I can centralize this. So you'll notice the body of the anvil, okay, the incus, the other name for it. Oh, and I don't know if I mentioned that the malleus also has a name for it. It's a, has another name, the hammer, okay. So again, the incus, the anvil. You can see a little ligament here. This is the posterior ligament of the incus. So that, uh, that suspends the incus on the posterior wall okay, of the cavity. And then this incus goes down and turns into the long cruce. Okay? This is the long cruce of the anvil. And you'll notice that the anvil here articulates with our steps. This is the uh, stapes, the stirrup, because it kind of looks like a stirrup from a horse. This is called the neck of the stirrup. And then we have two sides here. Okay? This is the anterior cruce and the posterior cruce of the stapes. And then you have you have the foot plate of the stapes, which is the part that that uh, comes in contact with uh, with our vestibule. Okay. Now 
something to note. Uh, now we're kind of dive in a little bit. Well, actually, two more things to consider as far as the anatomy is concerned. And I think I mentioned this already, the state, uh, the state pedius and the tensor tympani. But now diving into the um, physiology a little bit of how the, how the hearing hurt, uh, yeah, sorry, how the hearing works in terms of the uh, middle ear. Now, you know, you might ask a question, uh, you know, why, why do we have a middle ear at all? Why can't the tympanic membrane be connected to the oval window uh, via one bone or just have a direct communication to it? Something to consider about our uh, vestibulum and our cochlea is recall that there's a, a, a fluid in here. And the fluid that's inside of this organ here, uh, this fluid is very resistant to motion. Okay, so you need something, you need something to apply enough pressure to apply enough pressure to be able to stimulate and create waves in this fluid right here. All right. So one thing to consider is that this foot plate, when you compare the size to the foot plate with the tympanic membrane, the tympanic membrane is 18 times the size. It takes 18 times the surface area as the foot plate. So the vibrations that are started in the tympanic membrane and, are, and then are passed on by the auditory ossicles, uh, you're, you're talking about a lot of pressure Okay. Now the the amplification, uh, the amplification of sound is doesn't change necessarily, but the pressure point changes. Uh, try to imagine when you're try to imagine walking on heels. If you're walking on heels, all a lot of your your weight is on the heel on one sharp point of the shoe, whereas if you're wearing tennis shoes, then um, you know they're they're flat. You have they have more surface area that are that are in contact with the ground. So you have your your pressure is more is greater is greater distributed, whereas uh, you're wearing heels, your pressure is kind of pinpointed in one single location. So likewise, um, so the the sound waves, right? The sound waves that uh, initiate the response from the tympanic membrane and then are passed on by our auditory ossicles. By the time they reach here, same amplification, but the pressure is about 18 times greater which uh, allows the manipulation of the fluid in this organ then, that then initiates the, um, the nervous response that, that is sent to the, the brain and then we're able to recognize that we're hearing something. Now, there's another uh, um, physiological aspect to this. You know, we talked about adding, adding the amount of pressure, you know, the, the physics to this. Well, there's also a protective measure that this allows uh, the ear to have, which we discussed in the previous video. But these muscles play a very important role in, um, in protecting us. Because, for example, now this muscle here, <clears throat> I mentioned before, is a tensor tympani. This muscle, <clears throat> this muscle is what's considered a slow twitch muscle. Okay, Slow twitch muscles take a long time to, to be get activated. And I mentioned before that uh, it takes about 30 minutes for this muscle to get activated. Uh, this is what's called a slow oxidative um, muscle fiber. Okay, this is a, a type one muscle. So, you know, if you're in a like a, if you're in a concert where there's constant noise, a lot, you know, or a construction site where there's a lot of noise, or maybe like a minute ago you heard the train tracks. Uh, you know, I, I live maybe half a mile away from the train tracks, but you know, you can hear them pretty loud. So after, if you're like right next to the train, let's say, you know, your ear or that sound can cause permanent damage to the cells in your cochlea. So this muscle will slowly tighten up and it actually it presses, it presses the tympanic membrane in and it, and it reduces the amount of stimulation that it receives from, or you know, it doesn't reduce the amount of stimulation that it receives, but it reduces the, the effect that that stimulation has on the tympanic membrane that that then can kind of dumb down, dub down that sound so that you're not getting the full blast, you're not getting the full measure of that sound and it causing permanent damage to your hearing. Um, and this is called the tympanic reflex. So this muffles the sound, it muffles the transfer of vibrations from the tympanic membrane to the oval window. All right, so now this one here, this one's called the stapedius. This is considered a fast twitch uh, white type two muscle. So you know, fast twitch muscles are like are the ones that caught. You know, when you when you're sprinting, those are the ones that you're using. You're sprinting or you're boxing or you're fighting, whereas when you're jogging or you know you're swimming, those are more your slower twitch muscles. 
And this one is activated when, um, you know, a, a classic example would be when you're firing a weapon, you know, you're hearing a gunshot. So this is an immediate sound. And that keeps the stapes from activating, from uh, applying pressure to the oval window, because that also can cause ter uh, permanent damage. But, you know, another interesting thing that this re uh, tympanic reflex that this that this protective measure does is something that I had not considered before, but it's, it actually makes a lot of sense, is that this also protects, it protects your hearing from yourself because it dampens the, the sound of your own voice. Yeah, because if, if your ear caught the full force of the, of the noise that you were making in your own mouth by talking, you, you would cause permanent damage. And on top of that, it would also create an interference in what... And so if you're talking to somebody and you're also hearing other sounds, other peripheral sounds, you would not hear those peripheral sounds as well. Or if you're talking with somebody and then another, you know, there's a conversation, like a three-way conversation, and more than one person is talking, you can actually hear people talking while you are talking also. And that's because of these muscles and the effects that they have on your hearing, that they muffle the sound of your own voice, um, you know, keeping you from driving you crazy. So, well, let's see here. Let me see if I'm missing anything else. I, I think I've pretty much covered everything in the middle ear. Uh, as far as the anatomy is concerned, we really got into detail into each aspect, each aspect of the auditory ossicles. Uh, we went into each feature, and let's see, and the tympanic membrane, yeah, and then we talked a little bit about the physiology. So, um, as per requested, I did I did make this video uh, with more detail. Um, good luck in your studying.